will compete in France. Our Hope for Hawaii series continues tonight, and we're introducing you to the first Micronesian ever to be accepted to Columbia University. The Hilo native spent part of the summer volunteering with the Hope Service's street medicine program. As our Allison Blair reports, his skills are proving to be invaluable. Not only is Ed Yichi the first in his family to go out of state for college, the rising junior got a full scholarship and is double majoring in pre-med and pre-law. When he's home, the 20-year-old volunteers with the Hope Services Street Medicine team, helping them connect with Micronesians who are homeless by bridging the language gap. In downtown Hilo, near the Mo'oheao bandstand, volunteers with the Hope Services Street Medicine team spend their Wednesday afternoons building connections with people who are often avoided. Ed Yichi knows firsthand what it feels like to be the odd one out. Always being teased, um, insulted for where I come from. While the 20 year old grew up in Hilo, English is his second language. We spoke Chiquis at home and then I learned English after. He says his parents migrated to Hawaii Island in the 1980s. They came from Truk, Micronesia. They were part of the first wave of Micronesians during Kofa. The Compacts of Free Association are a series of treaties written after World War II as compensation for the loss of life, health and land due to nuclear weapons tests the U.S. government conducted on the Marshall Islands and other nearby atolls. The treaties allow Micronesian citizens to live and work in the United States without a visa. The pact also entitles them to social and health services. Today, there are more than 15,000 Micronesians living in Hawaii, about 1% of the state's population. There is a very negative stigma that surrounds them, and personally, I want to be able to change that stigma. Yichi believes that change starts with communication. I think that's the thing. I think our community, they're very uncomfortable speaking with other people, and that, that's where I come in, where I can, I can step in and be able to be a bridge. Hope Services agrees. It's why the nonprofit has been hiring people from the Micronesian community to work in its shelters and on outreach teams. Yichi's ability to translate allows the Hope Services Street Medicine team to connect with people they otherwise wouldn't be able to communicate with. He sleeps on the ground, he stays around here, baby area. It's hard to say exactly how many Kofa migrants are homeless in Hawaii. Much of the data is old. According to a Department of Human Services report released in 2015, close to 10% of Hawaii's Micronesian population are either living on the street or in a shelter, a total of 1,150 people. It says it doesn't really sleep much and chaotic in his head, like pain, back pain. It was sad at first because he wasn't able to communicate that and they thought that he didn't want help at first. And I stepped in, that's when he told me he, he would appreciate help. While Yichi is still deciding if he wants to pursue a career in medicine or law, he's adamant about using his skills to help the people of Hawaii Island, showing them that even in the lowest times, there's always hope. You've just got to push hard enough. I want to inspire other Micronesians to do what they can to kind of move up in society and upward mobility as a group. Yichi returned to New York City last month to go back to college, but tells me he'll continue to volunteer with the Hope Services Street Medicine team when he returns home for break. In the meantime, the outreach team says it could use more translators. Head to our website, hawaiinewsnow.com, for more information on how you can help. Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. And we have an update on a man we featured last night on our Hope for Hawaii Island report. Robert and his brother Norbert, who were living on the street near downtown Hilo, were able to get into the shelter today at Hope Services.